2015, the General Assembly of the United Nations uh, adopted 17 sustainable development goals and multiple targets. Countries around the world are now implementing these sustainable development goals and deriving policies to achieve sustainable development in their own countries. I'm coordinating a project that is analyzing uh, the synergies and trade-offs in sustainable development goals in a river basin in China. University of Glasgow have been working with Nankai University for some time and teaching in, in, in China, teaching in Tianjin. And the Luanhe River Basin that we've been working on is, is very close to Tianjin. It provides a lot of the water for that city. So in teaching environmental management to students there, I'd got to learn quite a bit about that part of China. Fabrice then, then joined Glasgow and, and was also involved in that, that teaching collaboration. And we started to have discussions when we were both in China about research potential. We were talking to colleagues in Nankai about ongoing issues of water supply. There were dust storms in Tianjin related to Luanhe River Basin and other issues where further work was needed. And so that was really the start of this project. By implementing the Sustainable Development Goals, we can lose sight of the fact that these interact with each other. There are synergies and trade-offs between them. What we want to do is, of course, maximize the synergies and minimize the trade-offs. And this is well recognized, and there is a lot of research that is going on internationally in terms of addressing these problems at the national scale. What is less investigated and where our project is trying to fill the knowledge gap is what happens at the sub-national scale. So when a national level policy is put in place, what are going to be the synergies and trade-offs at the sub-national scale? Focusing on China is highly relevant, as the country has become the second largest economy in the world, which has lifted hundreds of millions out of poverty since the late 1970s. But the successes of rapid economic development means there have been high levels of environmental degradation and a knowledge gap on how these changes impact sustainable development targets and interlinkages between the SDGs. The resulting changes in land use impact water resources, food production, biodiversity and carbon sequestration. And policy interventions can intensify land use conflicts between ecosystem conservation, economic development and also agricultural intensification. I think in a lot of research, it's, it's sometimes uh, there's been a sort of overfocus on including official stakeholders such as government agencies, government ministries, and, and maybe academic researchers in research, and, and they have an important role to play. But we also wanted to expand that sort of stakeholder net out to include maybe some of the the less formal or more informal stakeholders, so the local communities, the local sort of businesses, and things like that, which we thought have a very important voice. In, in these sorts of projects. I think for some of those stakeholders, it's perhaps a little bit unusual to sort of be asked for their opinion on things. And, and it's perhaps taken quite a bit of work to get some stakeholders to sort of open up and feel like they can actually sort of speak their mind. But that's one of the benefits of having a project that's a few years uh, long, that, you know, you just keep working on that. And, and then once you've got their confidence, they're a lot happier to speak to you. The one thing that is sometimes difficult to comprehend is just the size and the scale. We're dealing with a river basin that is a significant fraction of the size of the UK, so it, it is much larger scale than we're used to working with in, in this country. The Luanhe River Basin supplies water to areas that are outside the basin boundaries. It supplies water, for example, to Tianjin, and therefore here you can see immediately that when policies are put in place, to try to improve the water delivery to these cities, there will be impacts uh, in the river basin itself. Um, and this is what we're trying to study. The completion of Panjiakou Reservoir solved the water shortage problem in Tianjin City and Hangshan City in China, as well as benefited the economic and social development of surrounding areas. However, high levels of pollutants produced by economic activities threatened the water environment, which would in turn harm society and the economy. Water resources in North China are a significant problem. There is a, a scarcity of water. It's a very dry part of the country. That leads to considerable pressures actually on, on the landscape. And the Chinese government has taken a lot of different types of measures, including transferring water from further south in China to supply the region, but also the sorts of land use management that we've seen in the Luanhe Basin to try to control the soil erosion, control the degradation of the landscape. 
All of those things, though, do have environmental costs as well as benefits. And the, the challenge is to see how they do trade off with each other and try to manage them in the most mutually beneficial way. In this uh, project, uh, uh, I and my team mainly working to um, assess the flow risk in the Longhair Weaver Basin. So basically what we did is uh, if uh, we have an extreme uh, rainfall event and then how that going to translate into a flood event you know, across the whole basin. And then we look at different scenarios and then how that different, uh, different scenario I think, affect the flooding. And then also we look at you know, climate change. For example, how climate change going to increase the rainfall and how that and then change the flood risk and so on. So and then using this information, obviously, and then we can infer, I think, how the uh, sustainable development goal are going to affect it. We look at you know, how the uh, flood going to affect the you know, population and then infrastructure and then you know, urbanized area and how that would translate it into losses. In this project, I'm uh, mainly focused on the flood modeling uh, used in rainfall river catchment with the uh, different land use change, climate change, and uh, infrastructure change for uh, the future scenarios. My work on this project is mainly focusing on the land use modeling things and the ecosystem services. And basically, the land use modeling is the first step of our whole project. And because we need to have a good land use map, and also we need to note what the land use will be changing in the future so that our colleagues in our lower package can use our data for the for the modeling. We put together uh, an interdisciplinary team uh, of scientists and experts covering uh, many different dimensions. We have a, a team of uh, nine scientists uh, from the UK, coming from the University of Glasgow, from Rothborough University and from Brunel University, but also uh, colleagues from Nankai University in China. And we have colleagues uh, from uh, Japan, from the Institute of Global Environmental Strategies, our project set out to understand how national level policies related to the SDGs impact development at the sub-national scale. Our study has shown that the local context is crucial because environmental, social and political factors vary and co-vary across the river basin. This means that national policies may not necessarily serve the interests at the sub-national level and may cause trade-offs that haven't been predicted. So it's important to recognize that sustainable development trade-offs will need to be considered so that specific needs within and across regions can be addressed to ensure that important provisioning services, for example, food and water, are maintained. So working with local stakeholders has helped the team to evaluate and validate the usability of project outputs to ensure that they're not only appropriate for adoption by the local stakeholders, but they're also sustainable interventions in the long term. And all of these outputs culminated in the development of the SDG Interlinkages tool. We developed the interactive the SDG tool for river basins, a free online tool to help understand, quantify, and visualize the interactions between the SDGs and across the administrative borders of 27 counties in China's Lanka River Basin. The users can identify the major pressures and impacts for achieving sustainable development at the basin scale, find their drivers and explore possible solutions. Recommendations that come out of projects like this and this particular project we hope are going to inform policy at local, regional, national levels for many years to come. We've got to be realistic that policymakers have a range of different pressures and influences upon them and we, we don't expect that uh, government policy in China is going to respond directly to the outcomes of our project. We would like to think, though, that the recommendations that we're making are going to be taken seriously and they will be used to inform those decisions. We don't want the hard work that's been undertaken on the project just to sort of end up gathering dust on a shelf. So it's, it's important, I think, that we follow up with the stakeholders, get feedback from them on what they found useful and what policy recommendations they find are, are viable and something that they can run with. And, and obviously, if we can um, influence the way that development is undertaken in the river basin, then that would be great. But also follow up research. We've made some great collaborations in the UK, but also with um, stakeholders in China. And it'd be great if we had an opportunity to collaborate with those further, maybe expanding the work 
to um, look at other river basins in China or, or in, in, in Asia, and that's something that will make a concerted effort to do. The project now is completed, but we don't think this is the end of the story. So I think we have a, a very, you know, I think um, uh, 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 kind of well uh, established project team and then the uh, uh, stakeholder group as well. So we really hope, you know, there will be opportunity in the future, you know, work together, you know, either, you know, I think uh, tackle some of the uh, other major challenge in Laiho River Basin or across the country or other parts of the world. So I think uh, we are ready, you know, to help, you know, uh, address, you know, some of the challenge, you know, or, uh, 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 including like the SDGs, you know, so we looking very much looking forward to that. <laughs>